Okay, continuing on to fun point perspective, we need to just kind of explain a minor amount of technical detail, um, and then we'll get into some compositional elements. So let's pretend you're looking down, and this is you right here. This is your eyeball. And you're looking this way at your horizon line. Now remember, this is from above. In one point perspective, you are squared off to all of your buildings. Right? So, it's important to remember that if you're facing flat against a wall, you're in one point perspective, right? If you turn and face a corner, you're no longer in one point perspective. Um, and that's just a little trick to keep in mind to help keep this all straight. Now, in terms of your composition, right? You've got your piece of paper here. You have a choice about where to put your horizon line, right? The default that people probably do is just do a 50-50. And that's okay, um, but it kind of echoes the paper just a little bit too much. And it kind of creates something that's super balanced and a little bit boring. Um, so you may want to think twice about doing that. There are reasons that you would do a 50-50 um, though, and that's when you want something that's boring and you want something that's balanced and perfectly symmetrical. Um, and if you double up and do a 50-50 with your vanishing point and your horizon line, you have something that's ultra symmetrical, ultra balanced, um, and not very dynamic, right? Um, perspective can be stiff and static as it is, so you may want to reconsider that. There are certain positions where you might find like more ideal things, like the one third or two third mark. Like if you put the horizon line at the bottom third mark, you may find that that's particularly satisfying to you. And then you can put a vanishing point anywhere on there. So you can put a vanishing point on that one third mark. And these are kind of like ideal things. You could also put it here if you wanted. Um, it doesn't really matter. It's, up, it's kind of up to you as, as to where you want to do this. But just know that um, when you lower the horizon line, this adds space to the sky, right? Or the ceiling if you're indoors. Right? And uh, that also reduces the ground. So this is kind of nice because the further you lower this down, the more it emphasizes the overall shape of what you have going on above it. And we'll get into more of that later. We talk further about composition. The other thing too is you could go even as far as like the 20%. Put your horizon way, way up here. And you could put your vanishing point way, way off to the side, right? And that would open up a lot of space in the composition and really emphasize one side of a building. Um, and again, you're subtracting from the sky greatly and you're emphasizing the ground. So if you had an interesting pattern on the street, right? Like there's this really cool like brick pattern on the, uh, on the, on the sidewalks or something like that. You could go in and you could do cool stuff with your brick pattern. Etc. right? And so raising the horizon line allows you the opportunity to focus on what's on the ground. If what's on the ground is important and adding a lot to your a lot to your composition and to your drawing, then you need to raise the horizon line um, as if you're looking kind of down on the ground. Um, now that's very different if you lower the horizon line down to the third or to the 
and you try to do the same thing with the same angles, you're not gonna have a lot to work with, right? You're only gonna get a few little bricks in there and it'll be kind of a nice, interesting like detail, but it's not gonna be the emphasis of the piece, right? The emphasis of the piece is gonna be, you know, whatever is going on up here, right? This is what this is what's gonna get emphasized. All the stuff up here. This is gonna have your emphasis, right? This is what's gonna draw your attention. Because it's just gonna be physically bigger. So we'll move on to other concepts in the next video.